Hi everyone, welcome to the web show. I'm Romulo, I'm the host of this show. Uh, today we have a special guest, a guy that with just a line of CSS, oh, that's great. With just a line of CSS can do the most, most crazy things. Uh, welcome, Adam. I'm so happy to, be, to have you here. Oh, I'm proud to be here. I'm thrilled that you asked me on and I hope I can share my excitement and energy with you and all your followers and we'll just get excited about CSS. Yes, <laughs> Thanks yes. for this mug. This mug oh. is amazing. I don't know if it focused on there, but no, that's branded. cool. That's cool. I, I, cool. I, I, I hope that you enjoy because it's so difficult to send through the customs anything and I decide, okay, just go directly from the US and uh, thank you for having here. And, uh, it's, and it's a great thought. It's very sweet. I appreciate it. Yeah, and just say say thank you for 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 sharing with us and all the people that will see this movie. This, this movie, no, this I call it the movie because I will release all in 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 a batch like Netflix, and everybody that likes the show can watch nine hours of uh, the web show like that. Yeah, yeah. But, but first things first, I want. Um, everybody to know who is Adam. Adam is just, yeah, he's, so he's a punk rock kid that just grew up not really expecting to be a developer or computer science and ended up finding a lot of uh, appreciation and joy in creating digital experiences. Like a lot of it started with MySpace and Flash and just early places to play around. And these days it's building CSS demos and design tools in the browser and stuff like this. Like how do I how do I bring fun to more places? So on yeah. on the Java uh, on the Flash world, you were the guys that use the timeline or use the 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 action script code to build your animations. Good question. I definitely did. So I started off not knowing how to even write a function. So uh, I was, I still remember watching people on Action Script three type a function and the way that they typed it they were like okay it's just going to be function this you know and it returns void and they curly bracket open close bracket I'm sitting there like they're assuming I know what a function is. They're assuming I've written a function. I've never written the same a function, with me. Right? <laughs> so I used the timeline for a long time, but I eventually, because I had jobs in the industry, uh, in Flash, I was learning from other people who were like building their, they were drawing with Flash. So they were, they were even building their movie clips and the whole vector animations with code and then animating that. And of course they had more power. It's just like building your SVG in JavaScript and then animating your SVG, you get more power, but more responsibility. Uh, so I do both. I eventually was making flex apps though. So I was writing MXML oh. and ActionScript and building you know, apps, uh, RIAs, rich interactive applications back uh, right when the early days of apps were just a concept. And yeah, hopefully, I, anyway. Hopefully all this time it's over because I, I, we're in so hard times. I, I started learning code for action script mostly because uh, if you use a timeline you waste lots of uh, byte size and if you use code oh, you can yeah. optimize uh, much much more uh, what you are showing and i was doing like advertisement like the banners and they have some oh. some tight requirements of the size that, so uh, yes and with just with the flash itself uh, rapid you you have almost the limit and i start coding because to to not have timeline was my I didn't have any other chance, yeah, and and was so fine. Curiosity, how did you yeah. get start programming? What was your first computer? Your first approach to to the programming world? Yeah, first computer. Uh, so first programming language was VRML, which is virtual reality modeling language. You sort of describe three D objects and describe geometry with something that looks like XML and HTML and then you place these things in a viewport you know and you know with a camera and you could go see them it's just like a 80s language from the 80s maybe earlier um, my first computer was from um, a neighbor a neighbor uh, no it was a church friend a church friend was a graphic designer and had an extra Mac 5 or something like that and gave me like uh, old Mac and I just I didn't code on it. I had no idea what to do on it. Um, but that was my first computer. It was a gift from someone. It was their old design tool. And I, um, it might have had old copies of like Corral Draw and stuff on it. So I did have some access to those tools pretty early on. Um, what were the other questions? So it was like first language, uh, first computer, and then. And how do you, do you get started? You already answer right now. Yeah, uh, be, because you have this first contact with, with computer and all this tooling. And what was the most 
what excites you most when when you start computer curiosity uh, because you you play music you are also uh, do some radical sport yeah you like um, skate uh, punk and yep. yeah being a developer it's kind of um, unnatural no a developer definitely was unnatural unnatural um, the designer side makes a lot more sense and and you're right as I think back to it like in seventh and eighth grade I was excited by Adobe tools because they were loud and expressive, which was kind of what I was as a punk kid. You know, the buttons that I designed in Photoshop 15 years ago were not subtle, minimal buttons, right? These buttons yeah. had like 10 layers on them and all these <laughs> textures, they were out of control. So, um, but that was also kind of what was cool at the time. Um, yeah, I think I got into design mostly first. I got into code because um, I got grants at school I, where I went to school. They were like, if you study code, we'll give you money. And I was like, I'll take oh. your money and do that stuff. Um, ended up really liking it. And, and I moved from a computer science degree where I was getting, I was like, yeah, all my school was paid for to design school. So I noticed in my computer science classes that no one gave a crap about how it looked. They just didn't care. They're like, look, I'm happy with the success that my calculator does the calculations. I don't care if my calculator looks good. My calculator is a functional calculator and that's good enough for me. And I was looking around like, that's all good enough for you guys. I was like, yeah. no one else in here wants to make better stuff. And so I went to a design school where I learned how to merge all of that computer science knowledge and database knowledge with design and graphic design and typography and blah, blah, blah. And all the while I was there at school merging these things, I was working in the industry as an intern building flash ads building dinky micro websites and just like little stuff and all of a sudden after five or ten years i have a lot of experience building stuff because yeah, yeah i think i think that um this is is, is one interesting path because uh, myself uh, too i i have some sensibility and, and some care about design because i start with photoshop doing uh, some dreamweaver copy paste things and yeah. uh, most of developers i knew when i was starting they don't didn't have that sensibility about design because most of them came from back and languages and they were converted to the web and the, they just don't care if it's squared, if it's pixel perfect, if it was a red or blue. They didn't only give a, yeah, and just works. And I came with that part, that sensibility, that art uh, that I like to, to see on the web. And actually it's one requirement to be a front end engineer right now, yeah? Yeah, it was like when I learned about the Bauhaus and how they were, essentially famous for being minimalists in merging design and engineering, I got really excited. So I was like, um, this is essentially what I would like to do. I would like to deliver minimal, high functioning interfaces that are ergonomic and delightful. Like who doesn't want to do that? And, and I'm still trying to do that to this day. It's a very difficult thing, it turns out, to be minimal. Um, it's very easy to add things and make things more complex. It's very difficult to make things simpler. Uh, so I'm still working on uh, how to make things simple, how to reduce things down. Um, oh, yeah. but yeah, they, it's always ongoing work, but yes, it's yep. fantastic. <laughs> um, just a question, how you landed now? And we, we all know Adam Argyle from conference. You are like kind of star of the CSS and all the, the, the browser related tricks. How oh, you landed you. On, on, on this job and, and, and how it how it works because everybody probably has curiosity oh this guy uh, just do these cool things or you also do the the things that nobody wants to do uh good question uh, so the two parts were like how did i get here and then you know like what do i do here because from the outside it can look like all i do is fun stuff um yeah i like that perception that is definitely how i I, I thought about it. I still think about it. I want it to look like that. It should look like I'm having fun because I mean, I am most of the time, but I have to make, I have to make time for that fun stuff. Right. So I have to like in the big, in the morning, I've got a whole bunch of emails to go, go through just like everybody else. People want me to do this. People want me to do that. And I have to be like, well, you know what, this morning, uh, I decided I wanted to test out, uh, if 
a gradient that had two opposing radial gradients in each corner. So I'm hopefully at like the corner of the camera right now. Imagine there's a radial gradient on each one of these over top of like purple. And if I compared that versus like a linear gradient that just went from like red to blue versus this one that had a red circle and a blue circle, yeah. and how were those merging? And how is that merging different than the, dude, that's the sort of stuff I get really excited about. And I'm just like, put, I put my foot down. I go, I'm gonna make that today. I'm going to make that because <laughs> it's important to people know that CSS can do radial gradients like this. Um, no, I have, there's a plenty of work. That's not fun. Um, like this week is perf week where you go describe everything you've done all year and, and try to articulate your value. Like, why am I valuable as an employee? What did I do per the things you want me to do? There's definitely a spreadsheet of things I'm supposed to do. Um, hopefully I do them. I think I do them. Um, so yeah, so. there's, <laughs> And those are things like document um, maybe APIs I'm not interested in or or help um, bridge a gap between an engineering team and a third party team or something and help them understand each other. Um, and I, I like all that stuff. So this job is phenomenal. It's very fun. Uh, I love it to bits. OK, so how did I get here? It's kind of a funny story. I'll do my best to like keep it short. But essentially, I got a job at Google after three times applying. I applied to Google three times over about eight years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like I was just like, yeah, I'm awesome. I'm going to work at Google. No, it was actually uh, the opposite. The first time I applied, I was like, I'm totally Google quality. And then they didn't even call me back. And I'm like, I'm not, I guess I'm not. I'm not. Oh. And then the second time I applied and I was like, I think I'm better now than I was. I maybe I'm. And then they're like, no, you're not. And I was like, oh, man, I really got it. OK. Um, so anyway, I applied three times. But the lesson have... here is never quit, yeah? Never quit. Yeah. Well, and I have a, one of my favorite lessons is you don't get what you don't ask for. So if you want to work at Google, you're going to have to ask to work there. Um, don't expect someone to come find you. Um, so I got a job on Google Cloud as a UX engineer on the design systems team. So I was bridging the gap between project managers, designers, engineers, and um, users and trying to figure out how to make Google Cloud the best it can be by in encouraging the use of a design system that helps everything look united and seamless. And that was really fun. I was there for a year. And while I was on that uh, team, one of the things I built was VizBug. And VizBug was, um, my, my goal was to give more power to the designers because I was on this product team and I was looking at this, this thing called Google Cloud that's just massive. And designers were chasing it with their design files, uh, trying to look like the app that they're working on where, um, I was just like, why don't you just go work in the browser? Why don't you just go change the colors of Google Cloud? Why don't you just go delete that thing off of the page and take a screenshot? Then you don't have to go rearrange it all back in your design tool. And that's where VizBug kind of originated. And VizBug turned out, I started talking about it with other DevTools people. I was like, hey, DevTools, you should have like designer tools in here. There's designers that open this up and they either have to learn code or go home. Like, why isn't there a middle ground here? And I'm pitching the middle ground. I'm talking about designers and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, hey, you're really funny when you are when you talk. <laughs> I was like, what? They're like, you, yeah, this, this, we're having a great time. Would you like to join DevRel? I'm, I'm, this is not exactly how it happened, but this is how I remember it happening now. This is a dramatization. <laughs> dramatization. The idealistic uh, uh, part, yeah. What you you have in your brain you record it and it's, it's okay it's, it's it's like this um it's, but yeah they essentially i was talking about VizBug. they liked it and um I, let's see the whole i think it actually came down to this moment where um oh yeah they were do you want to join devrel and i was like yeah um i was like is there a css devrel i've always wanted there to be a css devrel person i feel like we have representation in javascript and and apis and these other things but there's no one that's like all css all the time um and they're like, yeah, why don't, why don't you do it? And I was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Someone should do it. Someone really smart should do that job of CSS DevRel. That there's room. I think there's interest in the community. In fact, here's like 10 things I think this person should talk about. And they go, yeah, you start talking about those 10 things. And I was like, I can't deny this. I can't, I'll try it. I'm not sure. And I've just been giving it my all since I started. So I hope that was a good enough recap. I don't know. No, that's <laughs> that was great. Just a quick question between all of this. When you yeah. enter on GCP team, um, they uh, what technology they use? Because I, I remember they use Angular back on that time. Yep. Yeah, it was Angular JS. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Still, oh, they're on Angular, not Angular JS. They were migrating actually, so they were stuck in the middle. 
because uh, they built your original product on Angular JS and then had a modern version on Angular. Um, and they also had a split between Material 1 and Material 2. So they had two different frameworks, two different design systems coexisting on the same page, competing for users' attention. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Probably I'm too old to, to, to know the, the, the first version of GCP. Well, um, <laughs> we know already more or less who is Adam. Thank you a lot. And now we're going to jump to a completely different question about the web. What do you think about the web? What is your vision um, from the actual landscape? And um, what do you see or where do you see the web in two or five years? This is a big question. This is a big question. Don't worry, I, I'm I'm surprisingly prepared for this. So um, one thing for me that's really important, two really important things about the web. These are distinguishing factors to me that I think are important and are the reason it's still alive. The first one is the web is weird. The web is weird. The web has weird places and they're easy to find. When you go to a city and you visit a new city for the first time, do you want the normal streets where they have Beverly Hills? Like, you know, do you, do you want to go walk the main strip with the main markets with the big, you know, commercial? Or do you want to go down a side street that's kind of funky? Yeah. When I go to Barcelona, I'm not going to Nordstrom. Uh, there's a Nordstrom there, but I'm not going to go to Nordstrom when I'm in Barcelona. I'm going to go to Barcelona and I'm going to walk the catacombs and I'm going to walk through La Rambla and I'm going to have fun and go somewhere unique and weird. I'm going to go somewhere weird. The web delivers weird. I think weird is important. I think this is why apps aren't exciting. Apps are a, a utility belt that you wear with function. They're not fun, whimsical moments. And the web has whimsical uh, everywhere. It's It can just... Mm, it's just oozing whimsical if you want to find it. It also has a business side. So, and then thing number two that's really important to me about the web is a URL is an app. It's the beginning of your app moment, and it's a and it's a it's a link to a nested state even in an app. It's more brilliant than an app could ever be because it's a representation of a moment in the app. Uh, it's just beautiful. So anyway, the link oh. is a very very powerful thing. Yes, yes. Uh, ju just jumping to the, the, the first part, it's a, a very interesting uh, point of view about the web. And because, uh, the, uh, in my opinion as well, um, the cool thing that you are mentioning, it, it, it's, it's reality, is completely reflected because you can walk for the main streets of the web and do beautiful things, but you can also cross uh, the, the main road and go to the funky places and do even more beautiful things, uh, get trapped there for to discover all the, the stuff. People from standards that probably never jump to the main road, but they are there supporting uh, the things. People that goes there and push the funky parts to the main road, uh, opening that uh, store that is completely uh, non-related with uh, what is going on on the main street. And this is one of the coolest um, observations I, 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 I heard about the web, that it's completely uh, surprised. I would, I'm lucky because it's recorded and every time I want to listen about how the philosophy and how about the web, I will listen to that. This is why you'll see me say keep the web weird. Other people say keep the web weird too, but this is what I mean by it is I think it's it is the only way it will continue to survive is if it stays weird in some way. So if we get too business focused, we might lose what has kept us here the whole time. Anyway. Yeah, that's that, that's that's completely completely true. And um, the second part, um, I just completely forgot about. I was so I was so, oh, so URLs so, so, are apps. I, it's yes, URLs. Yes, URL sorry, I was just like uh, in, in the cloud. Yeah, you were still the whimsical, the, like oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and about this 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 uh, this mention about the the URL is the app. Yeah, in reality, it's, it's your it's your door to your uh, house or to your home and it, it's a good perception and it's a good vision it's a little vague yeah open but the web is like that yeah it's just yeah it's a like a mobile number or a phone number to your to your presence but in the web is even bigger it's your house completely house and probably lots of people are forgetting about that because we have service like google bing that you don't type url anymore 
Most of the yeah. people go Google or Chrome already do the completion of the URL. And that relation with the URL itself, it's it start get a little bit lost. But yeah, I, I, I like your that concept and, and and what you 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 are proposing. Um, just complementing this question, what do you see in five years, the web in five years? You already answered, but and some real thought about um, we're gonna have browsers like we have now, we're gonna bet on the augmented reality, virtual reality or something else. That's a good question. So, um, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality, interesting concepts. I think augmented reality has more legs than virtual reality, but where the web is going to be. So the web's big powers right now are that it's able to send these magical documents around really, really fast, right? That can have a lot or a little bit of information. It's also part of its bummer is it's not really an API with like raw data, whereas like a augmented reality system's probably not going to just render a web page. It's going to want to scrub the data off of it in some way. I'm not sure, but in five years, the web, I hope the web is, um, I think the web in five years, I hope it's delivering better experiences with less bytes. And I mean that because uh, a lot of APIs right now are a lot of like UI features that we want. We have to manage with JavaScript and we're hoping that the browser can just start to deliver more of these features over time. And so we'll deliver less, less custom code um, but still delivering the same rich experiences. So that's what I would like to see. Yeah, CSS kind of doing more. And how about this obsession for performance to minimize everything? Um, what do you think about, because now we develop, um, I think that that is good because we, we have to have some restrictions to not have like the web from five years ago that we have one megabyte JavaScript was completely normal because nobody cares. But all this, um, I, I think that also it's, it's uh, obsessive, the, the, the performance, the, the size, the, what do you think about that? Oh, I could, I fully agree. Okay. Um, I have this phrase, which is, um, a lot of performance people, um, their need for speed is insatiable. The, the faster and more speed, more speed, they it's constantly more speed. And it's an addiction. There's a speed addiction. There's a, a performance <laughs> addiction that you can have. Now I want to just uh, come back from that a little bit and less of like a, like a harsh side to that, which is that I think that building websites and delivering ex experiences is a lot like being a chef and you have a, like as a developer, you're a chef and you are in a restaurant, let's say, and the restaurant that you work for might be uh, fast food that's delivering one megabyte bundles of garbage food to users. Or you might be a sushi restaurant or something that's like barely delivering anything. It's like super minimal. It's like HTML and CSS, no JavaScript or something like that. So what I'm getting at is that the the meal, I, I would like to see a relationship between the restaurant chef and the user um, being able to co communicate more about what the user is asking for. Because right now the user basically knocks on the door and then you just give them a meal, right? Hi, I came to the, so we're talking about the house, right? Your URL, I'm here at the URL, open up server, the server open up and goes, whoosh, hands you a meal and you're like, yeah. what did I, what do I, what did I get here? I guess I'll just start eating this content because this is what you gave me. Um, I'd like to see a relationship there change where um, maybe someone can say that, well, this is like a preferences we have. Prefers reduced data is a good example. The user's coming to the table and saying, uh, I'm in a low lit scenario, I would like dark, uh, mode and I would like prefers reduced data. I'm in like a constraint in Wi-Fi scenario. Please don't send me five megabytes of stuff. I would like just a little bit. So um, these sort of client hints and media queries that we have about preferences, I'd love to see these evolve more so that a more tailored meal can be delivered to someone and a chef who's um, ready for that and is prepared to do that can start to deliver much more slimmer meals to the folks that want it bigger meals to the people that want a bigger meal because there are definitely moments on a big computer where a big meal is fine. You're like, send me the oh. megabytes. I'll crunch them and I'll, I'm going to, it's going to be great. Um, so anyway, I, I think that is a good analogy for the size of the bundles that we want. It's okay. Here's what I mean is at the end of the day, it's always a good example to try to, or a good idea to try to deliver someone a, a minimal meal. 
like deliver them a meal that's just what they need, right? Where they'll eat yeah. every piece off the plate and feel full. This is how you should be with your code. You can be too minimal and deliver like two grains of rice and half a piece of fish. And you're like, that's not even a full piece of sushi, <laughs> um, right? So it's like, you can be so obsessed about performance that you might deliver not enough. And then you can also over deliver. So if you're thinking about these meals and just giving something that's the right size for what they need, um, that is a consistent, healthy way to think about your bundle size and the amount of bites that you're building and shipping, um, regardless of the time of year it is. Like if it's 2010 or 2050, you should be delivering a minimal, healthy sized meal to someone. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my feeling. That, that is a great <laughs> definition. Actually, uh, we, we are just creating some phrases to, to, to add on the book because this is our so great definition about the food, uh, about all the, the, the tourism, uh, how busy the city. Now that it's, it's, it's great. Uh, well, because we also have time, uh, you have your own time. Uh, I, I will stay here all day long, uh, <laughs> but we, we need to jump to more questions like uh, I do to all, all, all my, my guests. And the next one is show me how do you work um, and show me how do you work. You work with the uh, ukulele, you work with uh, three screens. We work, you work with the 32 gigabytes computer. Show me, tell me, tell the guys cool. how they, they, they is your stuff, how you, you prepare that meals to, to make everybody happy. I let's continue the metaphor and talk Show me about your kitchen. How, huh? <laughs> Show me your kitchen. Yeah. It's like that. That's literally what I'm going to tell you about is my <laughs> kitchen because that is my development space is my kitchen. And, uh, I've, I even have like a YouTube video where I, I said, NPM install is like a dump truck of gadgets comes to your kitchen and just dumps all the gadgets into your kitchen. And the bigger your NPM install, the bigger your kitchen gets and the more gadgets you have to choose from. And the, maybe the harder your meal gets to be prepare. So like, anyway, I can get really carried away with that metaphor, but uh, the way that I like to work now, so let's just think about, um, phases really quick. I like thinking about where the phase of my career is and maybe the phase of someone else's career or the phase of someone's product and the phase of, um, like what they work on. So for me right now, I'm not at an agency anymore. I'm in more of a, you know, a large corporation. And so my work speed and the way I work is a little bit different. But um, personally, for just workspace, just to just get it out of the way, I always like two monitors. So, um, and usually I'll have like a laptop plugged in too. Um, I like laptop keyboards. Um, here's a weird thing I do about tools. Um, so my keyboard, I use any keyboard. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not particular about a keyboard. I like feeling I can get on any keyboard and be effective. I like feeling I can get in any terminal and be effective. So if you look at my terminal, there's not a bunch of plugins. If you look at my code editor, I want to be able to get in any code editor and be effective. So my code editor doesn't have a lot of plugins. Um, the way that I work is I want my kitchen actually, I want to focus more on my knives and my cutting blocks and stuff that's sort of uh, tooling that will spread across all my tasks. For me, it's like, I just like minimal tools because at the end of the day, I find that let's say I'm in my kitchen now and I'm cooking something and I, and I grab three gadgets out. I grab the instant pot because I need to steam a bunch of veggies and, you know, and I grab a, a super power chopper to chop all my other things. And anyway, so at the end of my cooking, I have these huge gadgets that I now have to maintain. And what's interesting is I bought the gadget um, to make my life easier, right? I was like, no, I, I'm gonna buy this gadget and then all of a sudden my task is easier. But what you don't realize is every gadget investment, every NPM install, everything that you have in your environment, in your kitchen, in your plugin system, in your everything are all things you have to take care of. They don't, they, they will deteriorate and they will pop up and be like, hey, I need an update. And you're like, oh man, this thing was supposed to not be annoying, but now I'm updating it all. In some, in one, in some phases of my career, I was collecting plugins 
like a crazy person and because it was really fun. And I'd spend all day making my VS Code instance or my Atom instance or my Sublime instance, my editor, and my terminal have all these really cool features that auto-completed what I'm typing and blah, it's just all of it. You know, like colors were in line and had a little swatch and that stuff, a lot of it's default now. But anyway, I spent so much time on my tooling, I wasn't actually getting anything done. So I found that the more tools that I acquired to help my life, I eventually would reach this scenario where I went and got rid of everything in my kitchen. And maybe you've done this before. Maybe you've gone into your workspace, like your workbench or your kitchen, and you're like, gadget, 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 gone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, I think that it's... The gadget, but all, my relationship with you now is changing. Um, I, just continue your, your, your thoughts, but happen, uh, I think happen not only in programming, because I, I feel like in the music, when I start playing uh, bass, I want to play all the techniques on the same song um, and all these install plugins, etc. You want to have all the techniques, all the things inside your just 10 line function, but you want to use all the techniques, all the blinking things. Yeah, it's, it's something that happened to me and, and still happening sometime. I, I, sometimes I get excited with something like having lights, having now microphones for recording. Yeah, it's we need some excitement uh, sometimes in, in our lives and depend the place we are. And yeah, you, you, you did a very cool observation on that. Um, do you have any tips or tricks in how do you code? How do you work? How do you think about it? Yeah, these days I'd say my um, my best tip, at least where I'm currently at in my phase of development, is I try to optimize for iteration. I assume I'm wrong. So even though I've been making apps for over 10 years and I feel really good about it, I still try to assume I'm going to get it wrong the first time and that I might even get it wrong a second time. So I optimize for iteration. I, I make and I work in a code base that isn't making too many commitments. This is a lot like also not picking too many tools in the beginning. I want to feel nimble. I want to feel like I can shift when a new business requirement actually shakes the foundation of the application because that usually happens. So again, I just assume you're wrong. Uh, and just and be okay with refactoring and and changing and iterating like v1 don't ship v1 everyone ships v1 ship v3 yeah. so optimize for that assume you'll be wrong in v1 and 2 um that's my biggest tip assume you're wrong and optimize to eventually be right it, shake your way wiggle your way to right don't yeah. just be like i want to be right in one straight line I'm just like, have fun being wrong in the wrong direction. Okay. Um. Unfortunately with me, I have similar thoughts and uh, the worst part that my colleagues already know, because when I do some, some task, I say, oh, I'm done. They say, no, you're not done. You, are, you will refactor three times before you deliver it. Meaning that uh, they ask always, you are done the first, the second, or it's the, the good one, yeah? And uh, sometimes I, I have a quite big task and in the last day or two days before delivery, I said, okay, just delete all this and I have enough knowledge to know what is needed. And yeah, it's uh, w where the things go, go best, at least on, on my side. But yeah, that's a cool productivity. Yeah, it's very, definitely very thing. normal to have these bugs. This is a cool one. But anyway, uh, I, I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, I, I'm not tired to repeat. But show us your pet project, what you are doing aside uh, of your uh, dev real thing, CSF thing, what you are doing aside. Show us. Yeah, I have I have two that I'll share. So one is Vizbug, which you know of, and Vizbug is just the start of the, an idea, the start of a goal, which is to make visual design tools that work in any web page, in any HTML page. I should be able to launch some de design tools and make changes and, and inspect and understand what's happening there. So um, that's called Fizzbug, and that is definitely alive and kicking. And I work with the DevTools team a lot to, um, to integrate those ideas and those thoughts into DevTools. So that's still a pet project, but I guess it's not quite as much of a pet project anymore because Google Chrome has picked it up and now it's sort of under their wing. I do have a new one that I just made last week. 
<gasps> you ready? Do, 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 you want, do you want to show us or share the screen or if you have the opportunity? Um, just one thing about Ooh. this bag. Someday we'll see yeah. it on Chrome. Uh, oh. Built in, like Lighthouse, start like an ex extension and lately became part of the browser itself. It did, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, it almost did at one point. Um, really really close and then it didn't and you know maybe i should try to go i maybe i'll go build my own version of chromium put visbug in it and take a screenshot to see how it does um sounds like fun yeah i know that that will, will be cool cool and how about your second pet project okay so you i think you should visit the url and share your screen and um give me a reaction to what it is see if you like my new pet project <gasps> okay just let me share my screen. Give me a sec. Okay, we have here. There it is. Now yep. we are. Oh, that's cool. And so it's a, a library just like animate.css, but it's for transitions. And so it will give you the code so that you can easily make transitions that do this. And. Oh. This is just a website where you can try them all on. You can see all the different uh, entrances and exits that I've made in this nice little Svelte app. So this is a mini Svelte site that just um, changes attributes on an element. That's all it does. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Ooh, you have a couple of them. How, ma how much time uh, do you spend on this just to have like to see your superpowers? Um, I'm sure it would make a lot of people really upset how little time I've spent on that. Okay. Because <laughs> um, it, it's like I had the, I made a couple of the transitions in like really minimal CSS. My goal was to just share a couple snippets of like, hey, you can do transitions like this in CSS. And then after I made um, two or four, and then I made like eight, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to make a quick little library. And now there's like 30 of them or something like that. Um, but the GitHub is really cool. One of my favorite things about it is, um, you can you can import just part of the bundle, so you can import just the circles or just the squares. Um, or my favorite part is this concept called the hack pack. So the hack pack is you download, uh, you import the CSS of just the custom properties. So that's oh. all it is. The hack pack is just the custom properties. So it means it's really small, and it means you can do every transition that transitions.css has or more you can build your own from the primitives of the custom properties so you can say go from circle bottom left to circle top right out and you can sort of use the custom properties and build your own transitions right in your css right in your css and js whatever like you can just import the most minimal and most powerful version of transition.css and it's called the hack pack so oh, i'm excited that's... to see see how that lands that's cool. That's cool, and and give some lots of good ideas and use cases to to build on top of, yeah. Because uh, yep. you, you you can you can have in your own design system or or anything like that. You can have it and 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 can use it for for your transitions. Because most of people, I think that is is a, a topic that it's nine two thousand and nineteen two thousand and twenty was the year of static site generators and everybody has a design system even to do your own website I, I start building myself one like two years ago and i just build a button and a text field and was my my, my mind was oh let's create a design system because it was so fashion and people yeah. came up that they built design systems but the animation part the transition part all these fun things that differentiates the design systems beside of the colors and 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 fonts uh, almost all design system is missing uh, material has but it's it's a kind of different structure but most of design systems i see all these parts of transitions and animations are forgotten and these yeah. kind of libraries can help a lot to push this this to uh, a good a good path as well excellent uh, i'm glad you like it Yes, I, I, I actually I, I like all the, your pet projects because this bug, I I, 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 I imagine no, I remember that I told you here when when we we we, we met or we, we spoke here in Barcelona that I used to I I tried this bug, 
And I tried this bug in, in a very funny situation. I was in a meeting and people was discussing about, uh, okay, this should be left, this should be a little bit right uh, or that color. And I just picked Classic. this bug without knowing nothing about this bug. I just moved the things and one guy uh, on, on my back said, oh, he's doing already. It's, it's the unique thing that it's was... Done bad uh, was that oh it's done uh, we don't need a project for do it it's already <laughs> done yeah and and well we are um, we already finished our all questions and uh how did you like to be on the web show um what do you think i think you're a great host i really appreciate the swag my coffee oh. was very good out of it so i appreciate oh, oh, oh. that the questions were awesome and i hope i i hope i gave you what you needed in this episode no that was excellent excellent you exceed all the expectations and i'm so oh, happy to thanks, to, to you ha had some time and that i know we are all busy uh, during these days with all these uh, things that are are happening with our world and you have this time with this motivation and this is cool i already told you uh, also personally but um you are one of the 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 guys that i saw presenting on, on the conferences that um that can transfer all that vibe to the people that are uh, watching your videos your presentations and that it's yeah. your um, main gift um, and you should keep using it because it's not just the technical part because everybody can be technically perfect or, or can have a huge uh, technical knowledge but having this gift of uh, transferring himself to everybody and motivate everybody to learn and to 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 be okay what happens next i saw one of your videos about css or something and i was like, what happened next what what is next yeah like what will happen and this is crazy and i oh, just, i just have to say you. thank you to all your work and everything you are doing and hope we we, we met someday when this is all over and i think we will yeah. we know this world's too small we'll see each other again yeah.